Korzeletsky leaves in a circle for Simchuk. He puts it for Korzeletsky. One timer scores. The Ukrainian connection strikes again. When we found uh, that there would be an opportunity for maybe a compassionate release for Ukrainians, we we just started to study their country and who the best players would be. You know, looking for an opportunity maybe to to make our team better and to help a couple of young men and. Uh, they were the two top scorers on their uh, national U20 team. Uh, so for us, it was just a process of, uh, of honestly going through Instagram to contact them and find out who the agent was and uh, start the process to recruit the two young guys. So he just texted me and then I look it up. He uh, introduced me to the program, like uh, what do they have to offer? So I was like, yeah, for sure, I want to be the bandit. I woke up uh, in the morning and uh, saw a message from Danny, like uh, check uh, what bandits uh, texted you. We started uh, started to talk uh, about uh, like how I can uh, uh, leave country and came, and come here. Everybody was just so interested to get them to Brooks and see them on the ice and get to know them and figure out the language barrier. And I, I don't think it could have gone any better than it has, to be honest. I think everyone was really excited to uh, be able to, you know, give two guys from Ukraine an opportunity. But uh, you know, when they came, uh, they've they've helped us so much, and, and we're so grateful to have them. Awesome guys in the room, and, and great players on the ice. So Danny's a, a big, he's a power forward with skill. I think he's uh, he's he's come a long way since he started, just from being on the big ice and now adapting his game to playing on a smaller ice, a more physical game. Misha's a skilled playmaker, very patient with the puck, but I, I think both of them add something a little bit different than our other players have. They're very creative and they play a different style. It's certainly a lot more puck possession than our guys and I, I think we've learned from them. We know each other like uh, since childhood. We played like one line uh, for uh, like five, six years. He's my like be one of the best friends. <laughs> Like we just help each other a lot, with, like with our maybe like thoughts on like war. When you're just not in the mood because family is far away, all this stuff, we just gotta cheer each other up and uh, make stuff happen here. When you waking up every day and uh, checking uh, news, uh, like uh, what what happening every day in Ukraine, because uh, uh, your whole family uh, there, and uh, yeah, we we try and. Uh, like our best uh, to stay focused. I mean, when I talk to my brother, everything he says to me, he's like, uh, my, my front line is there, you're here, so all you gotta do is play hockey for us, for your country, for your uh, people there. This is where I need to be focused on, not on the water going, going all back there. You know, when you, uh, when you think you've had a tough day at the rink or something, uh, you look at those two and you see them uh, smiling and happy as anyone, uh, it's really, uh, really eye-opening and it's uh, it's good to be around those two and uh, brings you a lot of perspective. Like the boys, the coach stuff, everybody is just cheering me up all the time, uh, asking questions obviously and it just helps me uh, with that mindset that people do care and uh, it just helps me all the time. When guys think they're having bad days because they're they're not on the power play or their they're stick breaks or whatever it might be, um, we got a real good sense of realism in our team and. I think those guys have really made a big difference just in the day-to-day the -day lives of all of our players and um, just kind of understanding how fortunate they are.